G'day everyone, today it's time to get ready with me as Ariel. First off, off with the glasses. Oh, I can't see! Oh well, when you're a Disney princess, everything's a pleasant fuzz. Let's begin. First up, the crinoline. Although I've used this crinoline for a few cosplays now, I actually made it for this particular costume. If you're interested in how I constructed it, I will link the how to make a crinoline tutorial I did below. It is very lightweight with six steel bone hoops and it's secured with elastic at the top. Next up, the shoes. These are made from covering a canvas pair of shoes with the same polyester dew pony that I used as the main fabric for this dress. I also have a tutorial about how I did that as well, so if you're interested, please check out that link too. Next up is the slip. Nothing too fancy here, it's just a large A-line skirt with an elastic waistband and a ruffle on the bottom. The ruffle layer is a sparkle net on top of a layer of mint organza. The purpose of the slip is to smooth over the hoops a little without giving too much fullness. It was also recently pointed out to me that this layer looks a little like Ariel's tail, which now I cannot unsee. And it's always important to ensure that your ruffle is not caught in your crinoline. Next, it is the wig. I actually really, really, really love this wig. It's very comfortable to wear as it's quite big and it's very full as I sewed two of the same wigs together to get the full head of hair that is associated with the 80s and indeed our favourite fish girl. And I'm sure you guessed it, I filmed that process and there's a tutorial too. I swear that is the last time I'll plug one of my tutorials in this video. But hey, I wish my hair was naturally this intense. Moving right along now to the earrings. These are shells that I made out of foam clay, so although they are quite large, they are exceptionally light and sturdy. Plus, they have glitter on them for a bit of sparkle if you get a glimpse of it under the mass of hair. Getting back to the costume, now it's time for the underskirt, which is cut as a circle skirt. This is made from the same polyester duperny as the shoes. And on the front of the skirt, I scattered a whole lot of rhinestones. Whilst I'm securing this with two press studs on the side, this is a good time to mention the sponsor of this costume, which is Spotlight. They were kind enough to supply me with the polyester dupioni and the sparkle net. The mint organza is also from Spotlight, but I purchased that myself. And now for the final piece, the bodice and the overskirt, which I attached as one piece for ease. It does up at the back with a zipper. I just slip it over my head, fix up that skirt, and then turn around for common decency sake. I slip my arms into the sleeves and I do up the zipper. This is much easier with a second person, but it's not impossible with just me. The sleeves are in two parts, an upper super puffy sleeve and a lower very fitted sleeve. At the bottom of the sleeves, I have a little bit of elastic that I put my middle fingers into to keep the sleeves from riding up and also the point pointing down over my wrist. Also on the bodice is a brooch that I made which is a seashell and it matches the earrings and the bodice itself is covered in rhinestones. Nothing says Disney princess like adding some bling. And there we have it, Ariel's redesigned dress. This was a super fun dress to make and I actually do have a vlog all about that. I said I was going to not plug any more tutorials, I didn't say vlog. <laughs> but being real here, any time that I wear this dress out, I get a lot of love from lovers of Ariel, whether they be young or old or somewhere in between. I'm super thankful to Spotlight for giving me the opportunity to work with them to create this cosplay. And as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and why not leave me a comment of which is your favourite Disney princess? I'll see you all next time.